Hey there, Southern Oregon, Northern California, and the rest of the known universe. You're tuning in to Local Smoke. Every week we bring you cannabis-flavored news, interviews, culture, and more. If you are interested in cannabis, hemp, or the issues surrounding America's favorite plant, then stay tuned. Here is your host, Rue Grosteen. Don't you want to hear the truth? I'm tired of the lies. Somebody call Mr. Grosteen. everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the first official podcast only Local Smoke Radio. That's right. You have reached episode 110. That's right. 110 episodes of Local Smoke Radio. And we have shot for the moon and into the what? 21st uh, century. 21st century. We're internet only now. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. What is up? Everybody tuned in on Instagram Live. Woo. Jones Creek Chronic. What? Oregon Living. Uh, anybody else who wants to tune in? Hey, it's Sunday afternoon at 2.30. Don't blame me if you're out doing something more interesting. Um, yeah. In the future, you'll be able to do this on YouTube Live. They wanted a 24-hour meet and greet period or something. Prove uh, ourselves. To prove ourselves. Did you know you can't go YouTube Live on your mobile device unless you have 1,000 followers already on YouTube? Well, now they know we don't have 1,000 followers on YouTube. Busted. You out of us. Busted. Terrible. <laughs> ah, anyway, what's... Well, uh, never mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> welcome to episode 110 of Local Smoke Radio. I am your host, Rue Grosteen. And hi, with. Megan Pie. Yep. And uh, we're here every week to bring you cannabis news, interviews, culture, education, more. All with a little twist of humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the things. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to have to find some sort of a standard time or something like that so you guys can tune in now that we've gone away from our Mondays 1 Mm -hmm. to 3. But the good news is you'll be able to find these videos on YouTube. After the fact, not just Instagram Live. So we've gotten away from just podcasting, and now we are multimedia. Hey, but speaking of which, we are a podcast as well. Uh, find that anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, you know, anywhere the podcasts are cool. That's where you can find us. Shoot, where are the cool places? Where are the lame places to get your podcast? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, you could get it at Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're not on iHeartRadio yet. Apparently, they're not the Netflix of podcasts. They won't just accept anybody. <laughs> uh, SoundCloud, Player.fm, Radio Public, Stitcher. You know, yeah, a few of those, those others. Those ones. <clears throat> hey, Megan. Hey. Are you a cannabis consumer? Trying to navigate your way through crazy new products, hundreds of brand choices, and glaring news headlines, warning of imminent death? Local Smoke is your direct line to the best cannabis products and companies because we know our shit when it comes to craft cannabis. Are you a cannabis entrepreneur? Working tirelessly with your nose to the grindstone, sometimes too busy or tired to remember to look up and see what's going on around you. Local Smoke sifts through the noise and brings the most important and interesting cannabis news to you each week so that you can keep your business at the front of the cannabis green rush. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Local Smoke Radio, your direct connection to the epicenter of hemp and legal cannabis production. Here in the U.S. and I beg to say worldwide, there's one hair hanging right there. I <laughs> got it. You've been getting now on your nerves. It's been bugging me. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> Boy. Don't forget though, tune in each week to Local Smoke Radio. Catch the podcast after the fact. You can find us on YouTube now. Um, yeah, please 
This is your chance to get authentic, direct from the source cannabis news. We invite you to join us. Woo. Yep. Episode 110. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight this week is that it is wet and cold outside. It is cold. It got um, cold. My weather report for the week is lame. That is the outlook for the week. It is like hailing and snowing in Portland. I actually caught a few uh, tidbits of hail in talent yesterday when I went to the old talent health club. Gross. What the heck? I'm so glad I put up my temporary greenhouse. Yeah. Uh Um, But we've actually got some grow tips for you, but they're kind of at the end of the news. Check this out. I'm going to make them wait. Eight tips for protecting outdoor cannabis crops against heavy rain during harvest season. Woo! We need that. Normally, we'd give you Rue's unprofessional tips of the week for uh, cannabis care as we head into harvest season. But I'm going to give you, actually, the words from the mouth of a professional. Comes from up in Washington. So she probably knows about cold, wet harvests. Stay tuned towards the end of this, and we'll tell you all about that. Um, Megan, what have you been smoking on this week? Ooh. What did you just smoke? What did we watch you consume? Chem Don D by Sterling Gold. Our guest last week on the show. Yes, last Will week. Will from Sterling Gold making good uh, stuff. That Chem Dog D live resin. Yum, 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 yummy. yeah. I suppose. It's hey, delicious. now that we, we do this. Yeah, things. we can show huh. things off now that we're on I've definitely uh, been the old on YouTube. It. Yeah, there's Instagram Live. There's YouTube. We got a couple different cameras going here. We'll try to figure it all out. We're going to get it. Hey, what's up, Four we'll Sharks? Show Thanks for joining in on Instagram Live. Uh, Stony Sundays. I like it. Thank you, Jones Creek Con- Chronic. Oh! Megan has several <laughs> Stony Sunday shirts. It's true. Shout I think she likes Reaper. to be sober on Sundays. That must be the case. Yeah. What else have you been smoking never. on this week? I know you weren't consuming just one flavor of no, one never. kind of product. Uh, well, right here I also do have uh, the new Bo's Nose Nose. What do you know? Uh, this is Sled Dog. This is a collab between him and Dirty Arm. So it's pretty cool to see two different companies. What is um, this Sled Dog you speak of? Is uh, it minty? No, it's not. Oh. I can't remember the, the cross. It was really, I feel like it was a cherry something. It's fruity. It's, it's fruity, okay. Let it's me delicious. give it a whiff on that. I'm not mad at it whatsoever. Yeah, you want to see? Quite delightful. Current? Hash rosin versus that old that's dark not, brown. You remember that that's stuff? That's not back refrigerated. In the day? You know, it was refrigerated at the store. We you know we definitely take. Look how white of, that is. But, Ooh, beautiful white trike heads. But, um, you know, yeah, yummy, 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 stuff. and fruity. You said like cherry. Yeah, okay. I can't remember what the cross is. I wish I was more prepared. Dad, burn it. Hit us up, please. Questions, comments, concerns. Uh, yeah. At local smoke radio on Instagram or local smoke. Media at gmail.com. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. What have I been smoking on? Well, I stopped by the club and got myself a freaking all star lineup. So, uh, Sugar Bud PDX, True OG, the one, the only Mac One from the newly named Benson Arbor. Mm hmm. They're a little different now. No more Benson Elvis. Had to get ready for uh, avoiding lawsuits. I guess that's what that is. Garlic Breath from Pistol Point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, is Garlic Breath, uh, is it actually garlic like cookies, thymes, Mendo Breath? Or what is it? Or I would assume it? so. Yeah, maybe. I should know. I should know. I was like, so crosses today. By Focus North out of Eugene. So, mm, amazing lineup. Let's Legend see. True OG. OG. That's nice. You got Talent Health Club has it labeled as an indica hybrid. Uh, if it's a real true OG, which it smells as if it is, uh, in my personal opinion. I really believe OGs are um, actually sativa dominant hybrids. If we're talking, man, the sativa thing gets a little confusing. I'm talking about genetics. 
And I'm a little bit talking about effects. I think that uh, Lemon Tie really comes through the OG to give uplifting effects. Now, caveat on that, if you're a novice user, sometimes it can be a little much. And I don't really find it to be, I never found it to be sleepy, but maybe like debilitating? Is that where people think of it as an indica? Could be. In the couch. In the I mean, couch, that is literally right? what we tell people. Right. So, I mean, if they can't... It doesn't mean it's high nursing. High nursing. It's nursing sedating, and that's kind of what it is, but just more... Yeah, uh, it, right, yeah. to... In, that's also personal. I don't get sedated by immersing. I get the fuller effects of the THC, I feel like, but I don't necessarily feel sedated. <laughs> All right. Moving on, Mac 1, sativa dominant. It's got some blueberry flavor in there for sure. Really tastes like old school weed and pretty uplifting. What's the Mac 1 again? It's uh, a... Yeah, it's alien orange cookies. cookies. What's it? Alien orange. I don't think it's orange. orange. Mac 1, It's yeah. Miracle Alien Cookies, which is... Uh, Miracle, Miracle Alien Cookies. Miracle Cookies and Alien OG or something. There you go, okay. Beautiful. I think we could look these things up. Yeah, we probably could, right? We've got all the time we want today. Um, while you're looking it up, I'll talk about this garlic breath from Pistol Point, which finally cured into what I was looking for. Although I've been mashing a little bit. So it's definitely got that breath. I'm not sure. How do you describe the breath? You know, because there is a, a line of flavors, and it's it's not actually like Grandpa's breath. Not at all. At all. It's not... It doesn't taste like, I it's don't know, it almost, doesn't smell like somebody's It's almost musty, you know, a or something bit. like that. But, but you can tell it's not um, not because it went bad. That is the yeah. actual turp profile. Um, dank would probably be a good one. Not the breaths don't have skunk to me. They don't have a lot of skunk. It's more of a, uh, it's earthy for sure, right? The breaths yeah. are earthy. Definitely has an earthy, but I think uh, must was a, a good yeah. mustiness to it was a good. Uh, and to me, most, most accurate, I would say yeah. to me, I would. And the garlic breath adds to that, I guess, a little bit of fuel and a little bit of mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, savory. The savory. There yeah. you go, the meaty stewiness, but it's super um, mild on the mm -hmm. nose, but still a great complex flavor profile just mild i think and fatso which is oh my gosh good gravy gmo times chem dog is that what it is i can't remember fatso no legendary no. og legend uh, legend OG. og times gmo okay yeah. so stewy so meaty so fuely amazing oh Delicious. gosh that fatso holy cow uh fuel and cookie lover and chem dog lovers I just keep Delight. finding Miracle Alien cookies. So. Miracle Alien cookies. No, I, I just Who keep knows? saying that over and over. Well, I'm done looking for it. <laughs> who's going to talk about the headlines? Who's going to talk about these bootleg marijuana Ooh. vapes tainted with, oh, new development in the story this week, guys, tainted with hydrogen cyanide. Sounds Ooh. unhealthy. Sounds unhealthy to say the least. <coughs> All right, I'll kick us off on this okay. one. NBC News commissioned laboratory tests of knockoff cannabis vapes that found a pesticide linked to hydrogen cyanide in 10 out of 10 products that they tested. Ooh. Seeking answers, NBC News commissioned one of the nation's leading cannabis testing facilities to test a sampling of THC cartridges. Uh, 18 in all, obtained from legal dispensaries and unlicensed dealers. Ooh, NBC, killing it. <laughs> so they had to, like, Dude, go buy they shit. Dude, like, undercover. They, went, they, like, they had to know a guy. Have you, seen, <laughs> have you seen that episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm where Larry David tries to buy met, uh, weed for his dad? No. From uh, Horatio from Lost. Is that his name? Is that the kind of big guy? The big guy, yeah. Oh, it is a great like scene. Him. Anyway, so NBC things. had to do that, if you've seen that. <laughs> um, so anyway, one of three purchased from legal dispensaries in California. Um, the CannaSafe testing company found... N oh, of the three purchased, <laughs> sorry. Of the three purchased from legal dispensaries in California, the CannaSafe testing company found no heavy metals... 
pesticides, or residual solvents like vitamin E. But 13 out of the other 15 samples from the black market THC cartridges were found to contain vitamin E. Yee. Canasafe also tested 10 of the unregulated cartridges for pesticides. All 10 tested positive. Ooh. No bueno, dude. No bueno. The products all contained microbutanil, a fungicide that can transform into hydrogen cyanide when burned. You certainly don't want to be smoking cyanide, said Antonio Frazier. <laughs> really? You don't? Really? <laughs> the <laughs> vice not? president of operations at Canasafe. I don't think anyone would buy um, sorry, would buy a card that was labeled hydrogen cyanide on it, right? Prasada described the existence of microbutanol as very disturbing, adding that it's going to cause a very toxic effect on the lungs. Whoa. Wow. And um, let's read the next couple stories and then we can discuss because a lot of the headlines this week have to do with this vaping crisis. <sighs> yay, yay, yay. All right, not, next oh, one. Oh, Lucy, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> okay. The next one is just a quick headline. It says, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced that it, the number of cases of severe lung injuries believed to be associated with vaping nicotine or cannabis has now reached 805. 805 cases. Whew. And that's actually as of last week. Maybe could have had could be more got, gotten a little bit more. Why wouldn't it be, right? That is terrifying. Why it's wouldn't like, it be? you've been smoking any of those black ones. So, I was actually black. discussing this with um, someone yesterday who uh, unfortunately lives in a state in which they cannot um, obtain legal cannabis, but mm -hmm. it's been really helpful for them. And they were wondering, you know, shoot, am I getting bad stuff? Uh, I think they're actually getting it somehow from a company or something in in Colorado or something like that, right? But right. then it makes it to an illegal state later on. Right. So anyway, they were wondering, should I be really, really worried about this? And I was like, I, I mean, it is a concern. Um, but what I've really kind of... This all happened this year. Mm -hmm. Why? Cartridges have been around for a long no time. Longer than that, yeah. Right? So... I almost want to believe that, like, just a couple of sources somehow got, I don't know, tainted pesticides. It's, it's almost like this year a certain ingredient or a certain batch or something went wrong. Like, why hasn't this happened before? That's what I want to know. It's like, did people just start using vitamin E as a cutting agent? Probably not. Right, you know, exactly. Was so, that. so maybe and, is there bad vitamin E out there, or right? And granted, you know uh, that sort of stuff seems like it can build up over time and eventually express itself in severe enough, uh, you know, symptoms that you do go visit a health care provider or whatever. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's pretty weird to me that this year is when it happened, and specifically last like, like several months. Yeah, Not within the last like six months year. or so, I want to say yeah. so. Um, it, I, I don't, and let's be honest, 805 cases, while it is alarming since it hasn't happened before, yeah, uh, is not that crazy. More people are dying from, you know, cigarettes. It, way more. <laughs> On a daily basis, like 805 cases, yeah. you know, so, um, I don't know, it's just a little weird, and I want to believe the, the panic is a little more media-based, and, um, yeah. and more... I would hope specific to several chain, supply chains. That's I what I want to so say, too. right? Yeah. Rather yeah, than sure. an epidemic that all of a sudden is everywhere in every cartridge, I want to believe that it's just limited to a couple supply chains. That's kind of where I was going with that. But I mean, if this uh, NBC or what, right? NBC News thing did several different brands, you know, do you think these brands are all coming from the same source just under I, different names? Or do you I think, think the products could be coming from similar sources, and I also think the sources, the black market sources, could be using similar pesticides or whatever, or practices of not caring 
um, to uh, produce their cannabis, right? But also, let's be honest, there are some monster black market producers out there. And a brand, especially an illegal one, is a matter of a different sticker printed yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. So, different box, different sticker, It'll different packaging, found. you know. Same source, really. Yep, and you drop a couple of terps in there, or what? Whatever you're dropping in there for flavor. Ooh. Ah. Cat piss is my favorite strain. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Gross. read the next one for us while Gross. I rip this. Okay. Please. All right, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker uh, ordered a four month ban on vaping products, including those for cannabis. Massachusetts on Tuesday went further than any other state in trying. Uh, to keep e-cigarettes out of consumer hands, with its governors declaring a public health emergency and ordering a four-month prohibition on the sale of all vaping products. Wow. Yeah. Whew. Dude. Four-month ban on four all... Four-month ban. Hey, did you just start a company? Too bad. Yikes. That's awful. Um, <laughs> Germany Christmas. Hours uh, later, right? Yep. Well, for, yeah, I guess you can finish it out. Go for it. Stealing That's my story. Crazy. Son of a bitch. Hours later, Jewel laughs. Mom, did you hear that? <laughs> I would never be even mad. <laughs> the e cigarette, uh, Jewel Labs, the e cigarette company that has become synonymous with vaping, said that it had begun a restructuring plan that could see result in layoffs. Uh, division heads have been ordered to submit specific plans by Wednesday to deal with financial headwinds, according to a person familiar with the company's <clears throat> strategy and finances. Dude, Jewel, they're they're like the ones that's in like 7-Eleven and everywhere, right? Yeah, they're everywhere. They're huge. That's a monster company to, yeah. Whoa. 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 (laughs) Joey. Right? Is that Joey? Is that Blossom's brother's name? I don't know. I didn't watch that, actually. Sick. All right, that's enough of that. The House of Representatives passed a standalone cannabis reform bill for the first time in history on Wednesday. That's right. This news was everywhere last week. The chamber advanced the legislation, which would protect banks that service the cannabis industry from being penalized. Penal. Penal. Lies by Gross. federal regulators in a vote of 321 to 103. Whoa. Boom. How's that for bipartisan? Uh, all but one Democrat voted in favor of the bill. Republicans were virtually split with 91 voting for the legislation and 102 opposing it. Mm. For six years now, lawmakers have been pushing for the modest reform, which is seen as necessary to increase financial transparency and mitigate risks associated with operating on a largely cash-only basis, something many cannabis businesses must do because banks currently fear federal reprisal for taking them on as clients. That's right. Once rich white guys got involved, we got some change (laughs) happening around here. You must protect them and their money, right? So... Uh, I mean, the change, time has change. come. The time has come. It's good. Um, it's good. I think the term is gentrification. It's a new, new kind of gentrification. But listen, the most important part is that 750,000 people a year no longer get arrested for cannabis, right? Yeah. That is still progress. That's, that's some good progress. Yeah. It's important. It uh, now, I will say... <laughs> Modest might be the incorrect word to describe this. I would say anybody who's anybody who knows anything about uh, cannabis politics knows that things only change when money says they should. And so the financial bill is, in my opinion, anything but modest. This is a major step. Now, we still have the Senate Mm -hmm. and we still have the president's desk. But by the looks of how it flew through the house, like a freaking rocket ship. Rocket ship. I was trying to think of like some reference to a guy on a horse and old timey war things, but I don't know why. Um, like a rocket ship. It's an oddly guy. I don't know. It was like delivering the message, like. Who was the guy? The one guy on the horse. The red coats are coming. Yeah, the who, red coats who said are coming. That shit? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Help! <laughs> Out there, do you know? 
The red coats are coming. Who said that? This is really bad. This How is really bad. Know? Shit. Ryan, who told Paul Revere? Paul Revere. There it is. Paul Revere. Okay. <laughs> Beastie Boys could have told us. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Big news, anyway. And I think it will go through the Senate. And I'll bet you 20 bucks. Mr. They Trump. Pa- oh, Oregon Thank Weed you. Works, you're amazing. Much appreciated. I knew the community oh, would shout us out. Hey, speaking of which, what's up, Four Sharks? This can't. Ah, I remember this time. Lunatics Asylums 13. Oh, well, you seem very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and Oregon Weed Works. Thank you all for tuning in on Instagram Live. Super fun, stony Sunday afternoon. It right? sure is. It sure is, Ray. Hey, okay, let's go back and forth seats on this one. <coughs> you read a sentence, I'll read a sentence. Do you have it by the sentence? You don't, you have it by the paragraph. Yeah, but you know. All right, well, sentence I guess. I, did, I took it straight from their website. Okay, all right. Ooh, we're professionals now. All right, let me start. C, poor favor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me! I'm just kidding. Too. All right. <laughs> the or, or annual Oregon Growers Cup is one of the first cups held just after cannabis was legalized in the Beaver State on July 1st, 2015. It has grown to be the biggest cannabis competition in Oregon with over 190 entries last year in 2018. They take pride in their blind judging and are proud to be Oregon's legit cannabis cup for five years running. Every single harvest, OLCC, medical, hemp, and rec grows compete against the best organ-grown flower and cannabis products in multiple categories. And boy, they've got an announcement for this year. Oh. I won't tell it. You told me after the show? It has to do with edibles. has to do with edibles. (laughs) We'll tell you later. I'm not on this episode. I'm going to tell Megan. You'll have to tune in next week to find out. Ah, Mm -hmm. With over 65 and more vendors last year, they, well, that was a weird way that they wrote that. Okay. With over uh, 65 vendors last I year, have deleted that. they bring the Oregon cannabis community together for consumer engagement with vendors showcasing products and services. And they're now accepting more sponsors and vendors. And actually, here's the reason you want to go. We will be podcasting live there Boom. this year. Boom! Local Smoke Radio will be at the Oregon Growers Cup, and yours truly, Rue Grosting, will be a judge. Oh, I hope for over 200 action. entries this year. Ooh. Ooh. Got some heavy lifting, I've heard. So is it all the same strain, or is it just No, it's strain? just, okay. yeah, lots of different categories or something like that. Okay. Although, there is a category, I believe this is a competition, where they give everybody the same clone. And then they all have That's to one okay. of the categories. Yeah. I know what that strain is, I think. Oh, what is it? Slurricane. <gasps> You're right. He did yeah. tell me that. Yeah. Oh, Slurricane, Slurricane. Which is Purple Punch times. Dosey Do. No. It's no? Slurricane is. Babe, what's Slurricane? Oh, he's Do-si-do. gone. Dosey Yeah, he is. I, How's the phone still in his, in his hand? That's amazing. We need <laughs> we... Come. We kind of need a show. Okay. The show's got to come with us for this. This is important. The first, you're here on the first official podcast only. Check this out. Our assistant admin guy is, oh, he's down. But the phone's still in his hands. He's not dropping it. All right. Back to the show. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Absolutely incredible. How does he do it? Can you hold that for a sec while I tighten this? We did cover the cartridge. We did, yeah. Earlier. We need like a, a headline name, like Cartridge Gate. Cartridge Gate. <laughs> 2019 oh, yeah. or something, like coverage. So We're going to have to like ask a, a uh, several, listeners to submit What's up, John? their. Uh, John Burkett. What's up, John Burkett? Hello. Um, I am almost done, sir, with, uh, what can I, dang it, what is the thing? Story brand, sorry, got a little distracted there. 
<clears throat> and right, I must right, tell right. you, we tried for YouTube Live. I had it set up before. Sure, why not? It that works. No? Yeah? We tried for YouTube Live. I had it set up before. They said we needed 24 hours to do it. So we're recording and we will put it up on YouTube. YouTube Live next week. All right. Where are we? Where are we? We're Oregon, Oregon front, front runners. runners. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time for Oregon news, folks. You want to take it away? Sure, why not? Oregon Governor Kate Brown directed regulators to consider vaping actions, including a possible ban, uh, ban, ban, following the death of a second person in the state who suffered severe lung injuries after purchasing products from a licensed cannabis business. Wow, second one in Oregon. But were they also purchasing from black market sources? Well, that's where these stories get pretty convoluted. The mm -hmm. CDC is chasing them those stories down. The ODA is trying to chase those stories down. And it really becomes like a um, detective mystery case. You're like trying to follow this person's life. Um, hey, Megan, are you smoking all cannabis from only dispensaries. Have you gotten some from a friend before? I definitely have gotten Me some from too. a friend. Me too. What, what, you know, it's going to be a convoluted, um, mm -hmm. you know, path. They're going to have to trace backwards to find the source of this black market stuff. And hopefully uh, what they're always looking for is examples of the actual vape cartridge that maybe could have caused it. Do they still have that old cartridge? Did they throw it away? I hope like, they still have like that, that evidence, so. right? I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I anyway. Don't know, man. Europe. Alright. Uh, well, here's another PSA from the ODA. The oh, that was nice. Know. PSA from ODA. Hey, it's hey, really hey. really catchy. Real catchy. You down with OPP? Yeah, yeah you, you know me. me. Alright. Did you know hemp seed falls under Oregon's seed law? Okay. We have a seed law? We have a seed There's law. There's a water law, too, especially regarding... Did you know you can't collect water in this state unless there's, like, very special circumstances? You go tell people that in Ashland. I'm they gonna go, can't collect that I'm going to go open my mouth in the next rainstorm to show them my rights. You know, civil tell disobedience. Me. Tell me not to. All right. Moving on. <laughs> All right, ODA's hemp program and the seed regulatory program, known as the SRP, have Go a... Watch out for that SRP. Yeah, you know me. All right. Have a new webpage and handout with information on what is agricultural hemp seed? Ah, uh, what is it? Mm. Good question. Buying hemp seed, selling hemp seed, mm -hmm. record keeping and labeling hemp seed. Seed. That's right. Mm. If you are involved in hemp seed production, sales, purchasing, any of that here in the state of Oregon, it might do you well to go visit this website mm -hmm. because we're a legal industry now, folks, which means you got to abide by all of the rules and regulations if you want to make it through and keep your license till next year, right? That's, uh, uh, that's one of the, the first goal. Thing, yep, that's one of the most important parts of being a business, whether we like it or not. It's true. Um, and here's one of those good reasons why. After hemp crop tanks, CBD producer sues Oregon hemp seed seller for $44 million. That's right. You remember last year's lawsuit for $22 million? Double it. Double it, because here we are in 2019 and mistakes are being made. There's newbies in the game. There's evildoers in the game, mm -hmm. and uh, I would recommend, I highly recommend that you watch your butt and do your homework if you are working with hemp seed. Yeah. A Kentucky-based company that produces CBD has filed a $44 million lawsuit against, oh, where'd I go? It's gone. An Oregon company, it, I thought I was way further down, it claims it sold nearly worthless hemp seeds that ruined a massive 2019 crop. But wow. Elemental Processing of Lexington, Kentucky claims those plans tanked 
when HP Farms of Troutdale sold it more than 6 million seeds that were mostly male. Mostly? Seriously? Damn. That's more, that sounds like more than 50%. Yeah. Instead of feminized. Ooh, wow. Really big mess up. You can't promise. Feminized As promised. Seeds. Yeah. The suit says male seeds sell for less than a penny each, while feminized seeds. The, are there male seeds that sell? Less than feminized seeds. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, okay. Right. <laughs> um, co- uh, while feminized seeds cost as much as one dollar each, uh, or two dollars each, I've definitely seen, um, because female plants produce a CBD-rich flower. You know, very basic news story here sure. from Oregon Live. But anyway. According to the suit, the presence of male plants also prevents the female plants from flowering. Also very confused. Um, from producing flowers without seed is what they mean, but anyway. The suit says it was only after the Kentucky company had distributed the hemp seeds from Oregon to various farmers and those farmers' crops had sprouted that the company learned the seeds were male and not female. <sighs> oof, oof, oof. The farmers had no choice but to plow under the plants, the suit states. Elemental processing estimates it lost at least $44 million in profits. HP Farms couldn't be reached for comment on the lawsuit. Portland lawyer Warner Allen, who is listed... Pardon. How how newsy is this? States... uh, Oh, in, listed in the state records as HP Farms registered agent, did not return a call Thursday seeking comment. Ooh. Let that one settle in for a moment. Wow. Uh, that's going to be interesting. That is going to be interesting. People were making a lot of money on hemp mm-hmm. seed this year. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of brokering. <laughs> You know what? Unexpected I've, sources. People getting sued. Like, whoever, that person's going to make a lot of money in the hemp wow. business. But because he's sued for that shit. Wow. Oof. No. Give you rough. a moment to think about that while we talk about something else. With medical and adult use, cannabis already legal in many states and soon to be legal all over, parenting young children has a new challenge. While laws and conversations about this special plant are finally changing for the better, stigma and misunderstanding cling on. And children, younger than ever, are aware of cannabis on some level. They may not know much, but kids are smart and easily pick up on the confusion surrounding this subject. And as kids do, they have questions. What is cannabis? What does it do? Is it bad? The gloops and the special <laughs> plan. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Oh, oh, me? <laughs> I could just feel your look. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> the Gloops and the Special Plant is a children's book which was made to be a tool for parents to begin answering those questions. In this adorable story about Molly Gloop and her parents who live on a world that a lot like ours, Kids learn about their special plant and how it makes useful things from paper to medicine, and how the Gloop stood up for the plant when the old kings tried to take it away. Oh, those old kings. (gasps) Bastards. Bastards. (laughs) I'm going to smack their (laughs) tuchuses. The parallels in this story are easy for young minds to pick up on and opens the door for parents to educate their kids in an age-appropriate way about what cannabis is today. You... She pointed at Instagram Live. I pointed at YouTube. Nice. You can get the Gloops and the Special Plant on Amazon.com. And be sure to check out the Gloops and the Special Plant.com for more info, media, and tips on cannabis safety and education for children. Ah. How about that? When a child is ready to ask a question, they are ready for an answer. Educating the next generation today is the best way to finally change how the world understands cannabis tomorrow. Yep. Don't forget to visit thegloopsinthespecialplant.com for uh, all the info you need, but it is available on Amazon. And if you really want, I could score you a signed copy. 
Wink. He's totally doing the author. Whoa, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. All right. Highlights from across the United States of cannabis. Here we go. What's up, D Sully 91? How you doing? Oh, hi. Wisconsin and South Dakota are among the few handful of state. The few handful? Who's writing these headlines? I mean, I'm stealing these directly from real businesses, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, among the handful of states that still don't allow the medical use of cannabis, but mm -mm, legislators and activists are ramping up their efforts to change that. Both states are preparing for 2020 legalization measures. That's nice. right. Nice. Mm -hmm. There you go, Wisconsin, North Dakota. Speaking of changing laws... Next Indeed. headline. Next one. Nope, I, I caught it. She's there. Arizona activists refiled a proposed cannabis legalization ballot measure with changes from an initial version and plan to launch a signature gathering drive this week. Mm hmm. Going to be legal in Arizona. You're going to walk your way all the way across to. Te and then you stop at Texas. Stop at Texas. Stop at Texas, correct? Because isn't New Mexico working on um, a legalization as well? Sure. Maybe not. Maybe that was just decriminalization. Um, I haven't. Oh, there is a New Mexico story. But first, a study of landowners in Humboldt County, California, found that they felt, ooh, wait for it, that cannabis production has. Increase the cost of labor. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, wait, it's good for workers. Yeah. Though they acknowledge that it has increased the value of their property as well. Boom! Oh. And yet another one comes out. Mm. Cannabis increases property values. So the grumpy old kings, right? Remember? Reference to the gloops. gloops. Grumpy old kings can't get so grumpy about cannabis moving in next door. His phone is still in his hand, folks. I know. I was actually going to point that out. A second ago, I mean, it's pretty incredible. How does he do it? Update on 503 Kush's uh, nap with the phone in his do hand. Do you think maybe he slept a lot in school and he got really good at like holding his book, like his oh, textbook maybe. up? I and wonder if he's so good at social media that he's actually posting in his sleep. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I <laughs> All right, moving on. Moving on. We've got to we've got to get through it. We can't stay here all day. All right, let's see. This one is the New Mexico. Judge orders New Mexico regulators to let non-residents into state's medical cannabis program. Yep. Ultra Health Chief Marketing Officer Marissa Novel says uh, the How ruling. Cool. I know. Novel. Marissa Novel. Maybe it's Novel. On the scene. Novel. <laughs> says the ruling reflects the state's broader acceptance of cannabis as the equivalent of any other pharmaceutical medication. Hell yeah. Boom. Got to remember you. to get my medical again from Oregon. Jeez. Got to renew. Got to renew. Okay. On to I cannabis Industry, business, and financial news from the cannabis realm. Hey. Cone Resnick. Bless you. Did I? Hachu. That's where I'm at too. You know what? I double bullet pointed that. It should have been one bullet point. Is this All right. Bullet? Mr. Cone Resnick interviews Barrington Miller for an inside look at Canada's public markets. Due to limitations in accessing cannabis from U.S. banks and public markets, cannabis companies operating in the U.S. are increasingly listing on Canadian exchanges. Mm -hmm. We've known that. In fact, U.S. cannabis companies raised about $2.2 billion. Whoa! On the Canadian Securities Exchange in 2018, Barrington Miller of the CSE said the most common reason is to access public capital, primarily for expansion purposes. Canada allows, here's the punchline, even nascent companies to apply for capital. That's right. You could already be banking legally and get money and so all you gotta do is head up north to our friendly Canuck neighbors, eh? Hey. Hey. That's what I'm talking about. Boot. 
Boot. What is that all about, anyway? Boop. What's going on in the big hempen world? <coughs> all right. August 2019 hemp market update. Uh, the spot biomass market throughout August has been transacting in the range of $2.73 to $4.50 per percentage point of CBD content as supplied from the 2018 we'll crop year. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> we will? Yes. Wait. Stop. Keep oh, going. no. Keep going. <laughs> All right. We'll stop. So, <laughs> I'm like, Where'd I go? we're just going to explain this. All right. $2.73 to $4.50 per percentage point of CBD content for biomass. Do you know what that means? Tell me. It took me a minute to figure it out. It, it For a stoner like myself, the brain is chugga chugga chugga. I know. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, why don't you explain it for the people there? <laughs> so, we're going to make it easy. Let's say you have a pound of CBD flour. Mm -hmm. Biomass is what they call it when it's not trimmed and not really smokable mm -hmm. nugs, okay? So let's say you got a pound, and for the sake of simplicity, it's 10% CBD. Okay. Okay? So, if you're getting two, four dollars, and let's say you're getting five dollars per percentage point of CBD. You're oh. not right now, because that's not the market. No. You would hope for it. Dang. Um, you would get fifty dollars Right? Per pound. Yeah. If it's 50, wow. 50 bucks a pound for biomass, if it were $5. And say 10%. It's, yep. And 10% CBD. So, I mean, yeah, you you pull, uh, even if you're pulling 10% CBD on a $2.50 per percentage point, you're still making $25 a pound. Not Decent. bad for growing fields of hemp. Right. Meanwhile, corn is making you know, like a dollar or like 50 cents per acre of profit. Yeah. I mean, that's not profit. That's per pound. You got you to pay your bills after that. Yeah. But still. Still. I think it works out well. Interesting, yeah. Yep. Um, do you want to keep trying on that? I don't even know what the rest of the headline says here. Uh, let's see. The trend of biomass selling near the lower end of the range has continued from July as those who are holding product from the 2018 uh, have incentive to sell before large quantities of product enter the market from the 2019 crop year. Instances of this trend have increased in the last few mm -hmm. days, depicting the eagerness to move product and exit positions. I think the, you know, as I read this story and uh, looked around at a lot of the hemp products sold around the valley and grocery stores. I mean, you can find it in Albertsons. You can find it anywhere now, right? I saw at Ray's, they had a Select CBD oh, display case really there. I've Ray's. never seen Select anywhere in the grocery store before. So, so anyway, th that being said, it's it's everywhere. And I realized nobody, not as many people are buying it as I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm expecting the market to actually, here's a Rue Grosteen prediction, Maybe go a little down, and by next year, I don't think as many people are probably going to be wanting to grow hemp as, no. as are jumping in right now. We'll see. No. That's just my I, prediction. You might be right. You I don't think right. as many people are utilizing it as wanted to, although maybe now they will, now that it became officially legal. We'll just have to see. Yep. Ah, uh, let's see. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who loves to talk about how he's been involved in hemp the whole time. Hey, what's up, West Coast Tree Hugger? <laughs> ah, check it out. AARP, according to John Burkett, uh, AARP's latest issue featured cannabis use with seniors. I did Ooh, see that. I have pretty it cool. in my office. Wait for me to read. Yep. What's up, Atent Pro? How you doing? That's awesome. Go AARP. Hmm, maybe I could have you tint up the back windows of uh, my truck there so we could have some limo tint. My daughter Whoa. can do whatever she wants in her car she seat. She will pick her nose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she All will right. flick her boogers. Hey. Oh, what? Hmm? Hey, I was going to talk about Farms, Inc. Oh. Do you know about them? The Farming and Agriculture Rights Management Society? Hmm. Hmm. Farms Inc. is a farmer run nonprofit organization working every day to protect the rights of craft cannabis farmers in Oregon. Aha! 
with every oh I didn't no 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 you were right I, you 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 were so smooth that I didn't even pick up on how smooth you were damn it ready I love <laughs> <laughs> with every action we take we are keeping our liberties legal and celebrating the craft in our culture so we can best serve our industry and the people who enjoy our clean high quality harvests. Dang, I like the way they sound. Yeah. It all starts with the farmer, and actually, check this out. After all that hemp news, ooh, hemp seed news, ooh, ooh. hemp males, oh, pollination issues, all of that. Well, they want to hear from you. Mm-hmm. That's right. With over 4,500 hemp permits issued in 2019 by the state of Oregon, and outdoor seed breeding currently allowed. Are you kidding me? I just hit myself with my ring and it hurt. <laughs> uh, by the Oregon Department of Agriculture, the biggest threat to craft cannabis farmers this season is hemp pollen. Has, yeah, ask uh, them. Has hemp pollen seeded your cannabis crop? Inform them. Visit www.farmsinc.com. That's F A R M S I N C dot org for more information. Wow. Report that ish. Report that ish. Uh, I know it's already going on in the valley. Mm-hmm. Here, and if you pay attention on Instagram, woo! Mm. Tampers are flaring. People mm-hmm. are getting called out. Shots fired. I'm it's into rude. the gossip. It's fine. It's fine. That's how we self police, right? All right, on to Miracle Cure, medical health and research news. Oh, wow, we've got to hurry, guys. We have got to hurry. I don't know if we're going to get through it. Oh, boy. Well, head head as fast as you can. All right. Let's go. We won't mess around anymore. Uh, Go for it. All right. U.S. government announces $3 million in research grants to study whether CBD can relieve pain. Nine. That's that's a lot of money. I mean... Three million, I guess, isn't that much. It's anyway, not that much, but really for not. us, it, it's, for our community, it's, it's good. Great. That's that's a step, I guess. Nine research grants have been awarded to study CBD and other chemicals, although THC research is excluded. Mwah, 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 mwah. <sighs> a scientific review concluded that when evaluating sexual pleasure, most studies show that cannabis has a positive effect. We've talked about this before on the mm-hmm. show, but here's a good reminder. They added this caveat. Lower doses improve desire, but higher doses either lower desire or do not affect desire at all. Ah, Ooh. good to remember. No monster dabs before bedroom time. Mm-hmm. They might get sleepy. <laughs> at the very Or least. hungry. Or panicky. But there was that Seinfeld episode about George Stanza eating during... <laughs> Anyhow. Is that when he wore the velvet suit? I don't know, man. All right. A review suggested that medical medical cannabis may be effective for treating agitation, disinhibition, 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 irritability, aberrant motor behavior, and nocturnal behavior disorders, as well as aberrant vocalization and resting care. Mm, Whoa, there's some big words. Speak English, Doc. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. (laughs) Which are neuropsychiatric symptoms associated with dementia, and that there was also limited evidence of improvement in rigidity, rigidity and cognitive scores all that to say grandma i'm coming with the weed because dementia's <laughs> kicking in we all know we love you but i think the fam's gonna have to slip some stuff in your uh in your mush in the morning she calls it mush that's Aww. right have to slip some cbd mush. oil in there maybe yep on to modern stoner culture and lifestyle news South Park went after MedMen again, this time by name. Speaking of shots fired. Ooh. Good for them. In a new episode, the company is depicted as working with Tegrity Farms to oppose cannabis home grows. In real life, the firm was a part of a group that asked New York's governor to ban home grow under legalization. Those dirty sons of bleaches. When, can, uh, when Marijuana Moment obtained the memo, the New York Medical Cannabis Industry Association 
uh, sent Governor Andrew Cuomo asking him to ban home cultivation. The company told us it supports home grow, but didn't answer questions about its role in drafting the document. Mm. Hmm. In the new episode, Tegrity tells the city council they need to ban cannabis home grows or else unscrupulous growers could use cheap irrigation and drown babies. <laughs> That's a highly exaggerated version of the real safety claims the New York industry group made when urging Cuomo to ban home grow. You kidding me? You know how much cannabis is grown indoors in, in New York right at this very moment? I think it's probably working out all right. A couple pounds. Couple pounds, one or two. <laughs> I never sent any to New York. I'll tell you that right now. <sighs> what else? <coughs> Speaking of legal news, let's get legal. All right, New York Democratic con congressional candidate Michael Hiller is lead counsel in a lawsuit challenging cannabis's federal Schedule One status. Oh, what? There's a what lawsuit up? saying. You fucked up, government. Mm -mm. Coming for right. you. Pothead politics. Speaking of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, he announced plans to meet with the governors of Connecticut and New Jersey to formulate regional cannabis legalization plans. Ooh. Ooh okay. You mean like we should be doing here on the West Coast? For one state to do it, it makes no sense. I wish I had a good New York accent, but I'm not going to mm. try it right now. Uh, if the neighboring state has a totally different policy, because you then just incentivize people to drive over the border and buy it there. Hmm. See any uh, slippery slope argument there? Like, you're right. If there is a state with a border, uh oh, that's my wifey. I better get going soon. If there's <laughs> uh -oh. a state with a border, then uh, we probably should legalize the state next to it. Yeah. And they might have a border with another state, so you never know what's going to happen. Alrighty, guys. I guess that's this week's episode. Uh, you're going to have to head on over to localsmokeradio.com to catch the rest of this news, links, and, of course, you know, those eight tips for uh, harvesting yeah. cannabis outdoors and all that. Thank you guys very much Indeed. for tuning in to episode 110. Stay tuned, because right now we've got that interview with Highland Provisions. Ah, that's right. I guess it'll just be audio with no video. We'll figure that out on YouTube. Yeah. We'll See you guys next out. week. All right, catch y'all on the flippity flip. I'm not woke. <laughs>This has been a Local Smoke Media production. For more information, to collaborate, or to advertise with Local Smoke Radio, please visit localsmokeradio.com.